whereby you, you buy, you pay, and you'll be given a certificate, meaning that you, uh, you have been set free from the, the lake of fire. You'll be given a certificate that you, uh, your sin is cancelled because you pay money. You can even pay for your dead, dead uncle and dead father and they'll be released. The Martin Luther couldn't stand this. In, in October 31st, 1517, he wrote what, we call, what uh, many people know as 95 Theses, whereby he put one, two, three, 95 of them as a, as a, a call for debate. Let us debate these teachings. Come, let us debate. When he finished those thesis, he wrote and put them on the, on the door, on the door, plastered them on the door of the church, of the Catholic church. I, 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 I visited that church in Germany. And people started reading, reading, reading. It sparked a great reformation. It sparked reformation. Thanks to his courage. At this time, this is the time when you, when they declare you heretic, they burn you. He was not afraid of being burnt. He was not afraid of being killed. He declared the truth. And without his effort, you and I will still be paying indulgence. I probably will be your bishop collecting the money this morning. If, if you bring someone and say, well, your money is not enough, your sin is too heavy. You need to increase, increase your money so that you can take, we can take care of your sin. Thanks to men like him. See, truth, it takes courage to stand on the path of truth. You can, you can speak truth and then you make, make you enemies. So what? You can, you can speak truth and you lose all your friends. So what? So be it. I would rather be commended by God than be commended by men. So the, the challenge, how does someone become a saint? We will consider unbiblical way first. Let us consider the unbiblical way. The unbiblical way is the Catholic way. The Catholic way is unbiblical. I don't see, we can't find it in there. In the Catholic, in, in Roman Catholic, there are five steps to becoming a saint. Five steps. First of all, Catholic does not believe that a living being can be called a saint. You got it? In other words, you are not qualified. All of us here, you are not qualified to be a saint. A living cannot be called a saint. Only after you have died, then we will determine whether you are really a saint. Five steps, by the way. It's not even just one, one less time in the church here and then that will finish. No. Five steps. The first step, it takes five years after your death. So even begin to investigate whether you are a saint. Five years. Then after five years, the second step, we begin to look into your life. The church will begin to investigate this person, this person's life. What does it amount to? Virtue, does it live a whole life of holiness? Does it, does it, how, how can we grade this individual? Investigation left and right, and the church will vote. They say, this person is just, he lives a holy life. So practical, so, so uptight, never talk too much. So pious. And then we vote and we, that's not a saint, though. That's not, it's not finished. Not a saint yet. And then once we determine this, we move to the next step. The next step is veneration. Veneration. 
will determine whether this individual, whether his, life, his or her life attracted to people. And they, when, they, when, they, when this is determined, then the Pope, the Pope will now give you a, a title, blessed it. Blessed it. You are blessed, but you do not hear. You are, you are already in heaven if you are already there. Assuming you are there. So you are blessed. Now, now you're just, this is the first time you are called blessed. Blessed individual. And then they, they, they not finish. Then they, they, they mount another, another investigation to see whether the, the fourth step, whether you have, somebody has been cured. Miracle has been happened on your behalf. After you are dead, by the way. You say, how does that, how do you figure that out? Well, when you die, if the people believe that you have lived a holy life, that means you are very close to God. When you die, they begin to pray to you. Instead of to God through Jesus Christ. Now you are the mediator between them and God. Jesus is on the side. When, 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 if, if there is anyone, whether it's, it's fakery or whatever a person says, yeah, I got a tumor, I got a cancer. And we were praying, praying to Mary Maria, and when she answered, and this answer killed, this is gone. The cancer is gone. They will verify, they say it's true. You're, get, you're getting close to Pope, coming closer. Then comes the canalization. Canalization is the fifth step. Canalization. You say, what's the canalization? Canalization is a process whereby they want one more miracle before they can say you are truly a sin. One more miracle. Two. One is not enough. They need two. And people will begin to pray for you. Pray on you. Pray to you. You're already dead. Maria, 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 Maria. Cancer, cancer, Maria, Maria. Ah, after that is, uh, somebody will go, oh, another huge miracle has not happened. And that's too, wow, Million, uh, hundreds of thousands will gather in Rome to celebrate your sainthood. And then they will declare you a saint. Saint. That's how uh, Mother Teresa was declared a saint after years of her death. Unless you are martyred, that's a different story. That's what you and I will be going through. You wouldn't even know whether I'm a saint until I die. And then when I die, you begin to investigation. Taking vote in the church. Those who don't like me will say, no. If all is saint like Moses, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> That's what people go through, even till today. We are ready to consider the biblical view. What does the Bible say? We begin with the word saint. Saint. What does the Bible say regarding saint? The word saint comes from the Greek, Greek word hagios. Hagios means saint. Hagios is a word uh, in the Greek has many meanings. Hagios is singular, by the way. Hagios. Hagios is singular. Hagios, Hagios is singular. Is singular, and then Hagio is plural. Hagio is the plural. Hagios and Hagio is plural. Saints, plural. Saints. Hagio. When it says uh, it, it's uh, it's 
In the New Testament, it is used basically in the plural form, saints, saints, to the saints in Rome, to the saints in Corinth, to the saints, plural. So only one place you, it was used in singular hagios, and that is in Philippians 4.21. That's where Paul used it, singular saint. What does it mean? It, is, it means particularly perfect without blemish. It means particularly perfect without blemish. It also means holy. It also means holy. How does one become a saint? Bury this in your head by the work of God. How does one become a saint? By the work of God. How do you become a saint? For one thing, it's not when you die, it is when you are still alive. How does that work? Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. John 6, verse 69. Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. I'm going to take us the process, biblical process, biblical way of becoming a saint. How one can be called a saint. There are three types of sainthood. Three types of sainthood. Three types of sainthood. One, positional sainthood or positional holiness. Positional sainthood or positional holiness. Remember the word saint means holy. The word saint means hagio means holy. Hag Hagios means holy. Saint, it also means saint. You can, can use them interge interchangeably. You can say, he's a saint, he's a holy one. Believers are called holy ones. And then the question is, positional, positional. That's the first one, is positional. Positional. Positional holiness, positional holiness or sainthood. How do you get there? And that's where I'm going to do a, a little drawing here. This is you. How many of us know about Gamelia? Gamelia. You know Gamelia? That uh, reptile that changes color. Yeah, how many of us know about We know about that, don't we? It, it changes color. In other words, whatever, if it goes to, if it, if, it, if it comes on a blue object, it becomes blue. So that's what we are. We are all chameleons. Chameleons. So here, I'm going to show you what God does so you can appreciate the grace of God. And that's, this is you. This is you, Gamelia. I know my daughter will give me an A when I finish. That's Gamelia. That's big eye of Gamelia, by the way. My, my daughter loves me when I draw. She, she said, Daddy, you need, to, you need to put your addition on display in the museum. And he, over here, this is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The Holy One, the Holy One, the Holy One of God. Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. And over here, Gamaliel, and over here, we are in Adam. What do we know about Adam? Adam is dead, Adam is bad, Adam is ugly, Adam is sinful, everything about Adam. In Adam... 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22, eh? in Adam, all die. In Adam, he positionally, positionally in Adam, we 
assume the position of Adam. We are, no exception. Every born of woman, except Jesus Christ, who was not born of man. Every person that is born of man is in Adam. In Adam we die. Having died in Adam, Jesus Christ came and the cross represents the payment of our sins. Now, Gamaliel, you, you believe in Christ. Faith alone, faith, faith alone in Christ alone. Gamaliel, you have seen what Jesus Christ did for you and you believed it. Ah, it's time to change position. The Holy Spirit takes you, Gamaliel, and puts you here in Christ. You see, remember his color. You absorb color. You change. You have left the color in Adam. Now you have entered into Christ. You have assumed a new color of whom, whatever Christ is, is what you are now. Colossians. Now, now, now let's begin to look at the Bible. Colossians 1. Colossians 1.13, this is how you appreciate the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit. Colossians 1. In Colossians, Paul tells us that you have been removed from that old position that you were. You have been removed completely. Colossians 1 verse 13. For he delivered us from the domain of darkness. This is that place. This is in Adam. That place. That's where you were before you become a believer. This is where you were before you trusted in Christ. In Adam. In a dark place. He says now, for he delivered us. He says, that's arrow's tense. At a moment of time, God reached out and pulled you out of danger. He delivered you. He didn't stop there. From the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. Ah, he transferred you into his kingdom of the beloved son, Jesus Christ. He transferred you. He changed position. Position determined your internal destiny. Now he has moved you to a new position in Christ. That's why it says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Everything in Adam is gone. All the penalties in Adam is gone. All the condemnation in Adam is gone. You have entered into a new position. And in that new position, remember the position you just entered? Holy one. You have entered into a holy one. And that holy one because you are in the Holy One by, by position, that's why you call it positional. You are now holy. You are now holy, saint. That's how you become a saint. Jesus was a saint or set apart. Jesus was sanctified, set apart. In Christ, you have become set apart, holy as well. What did you do? <laughs> don't, even, don't even think about what you did. Brother, what did Christ do? I said it is the work of God. God is the one who did this. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. There the apostle Paul tells the Corinthians, remember the Corinthians, the Corinthian church was the worst church in history. The Corinthian church was the worst there is, you will find every kind of sin in the church. It was a mess. And yet Paul called them saint. Saint, 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 saint bad, bad believer. Saint. If, if any church could be called saint, it shouldn't be the Corinthian church. <laughs> they were bad. And yet Paul called, called them to the church of God. Look at 1 Corinthians 4, chapter 1, verse 2. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified, those who have been set apart in Christ. Jesus, saints, all of them, 
All of the people in the church, when you, that's, that's just a the beginning. They begin to read what is inside that church. Keep reading. And you, you find, you ask your friends, how did these people, how did Paul call them saying, did he know about them? Yeah, he, he did. He, in fact, he told them, somebody had told me about you. Their report card was bad. And yet he called them to the church of God. Sanctified in Christ. Saints, all of you are saints because of your position in Christ. Got it? You're not saint because you're good. You're not saint because you have changed. You're not a saint because you, you did some work. You're not a saint because you have done something that people saw you. You're not a saint. You are a saint because Jesus Christ died for your sins and you have been placed in Christ for all eternity. That's why you are a saint. Paul says, show me where boasting is. How can you boast for what God did for you? That is grace. That is grace. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.30. How, how did you get there? Paul tells you, but by his doing. Who's doing? Who's doing? God's doing. God's doing. By his doing, you are in Christ Jesus. But by his doing, by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus. God's doing. So that every time you think of your salvation, don't you ever think what you did because you did nothing. That's the meaning of grace. For by grace are you saved. You did nothing. Nothing. Zero. Nala. By his doing, you are in Christ Jesus. Keep reading. But by his doing... In fact, in verse 29, it says that no man should boast before God. No man should boast before God. But by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to you wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification, holiness. <laughs> you see it? He become for you. Gamelia, you just change position. And then you assumed what Christ is. Christ is holy. You become holy. Christ is righteous. You become righteous. He didn't come up with anything. He just changed position from Adam where you died. Now you are moved to a new place where you are now alive in Christ. That is the work of God. Isn't it amazing? It is amazing. Positional sanctification. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. In Hebrews 10, verse 10, you can read it, but I'm going to read in New, new International Version. It captured it well. I know I feel. We have been made holy. Saint. The same word, saint. We have been made holy. Read it. Sometimes we read the Bible so fast and we don't pay attention to what we are reading. It says, you have been made. It didn't say you will make yourself holy. It says, you have been made holy. Somebody made you holy, not you. You have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Once and for all. It's not you make you holy today. Tomorrow we check to see if uh, there's another reason to make you holy. Tomorrow we check to see if you made the cut. And then three more years, we see if you, somebody will be healed in your name. No? Instantly. When you place your faith in Christ. God, the Holy Spirit. You see, you see, the question is, how do you get here? How do you get from Adam to Christ? How? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. That's how you get there. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13, it says... In 1 Corinthians, it tells you that what, what's, what's going on with our yeah, forget about that. First Corinthians 12 verse 13, for by one spirit, for by one spirit, you as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ have been baptized into Christ. You have been baptized into Christ. One spirit. That's what, that's what we call baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
People who don't understand the, the meaning of that passage, they say, baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. No, 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 it's not. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is let me give you, let me tell you how. Baptism, baptism means to dip, to dip, to immerse, baptizo. So baptism of the Holy Spirit, this is Jesus Christ. And then the Holy Spirit takes you and puts you in Christ. You have been baptized in Christ. You have been put inside Christ. You have been immersed in Christ. That is the meaning of baptism. Immersion. So the Holy Spirit takes you and puts you in Christ, baptizes you into Christ, and you now clothe yourself with Christ. That's what the Bible says. That's exactly what the Bible says. Now you are baptized in Christ by the Holy Spirit, not by your own, your own doing, by the Holy Spirit. Look at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 says the same thing. For by one sacrifice, he has perfected. I like that word. For by one sacrifice, by, by one offering or by one sacrifice, he has perfected. That word perfected is in the perfect text in the Greek. It means, perfect text in the Greek means something that is done once and will continue forever. You can say hallelujah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> something that God does once because he's the God. God is the one who is doing it. God is perfect. His work is perfect. There is no way God, a perfect God can do something and comes back and say, uh, I made a mistake. Once God does something, it remains done. That's his character. And that's why the author put that word in, in, in perfect tense in the Greek. It says, it has been done once and for all. It cannot be changed. For by one offering, you, he has perfected all those who have been set apart, who has been made holy in Christ Jesus. It's exciting. The more you uncover the truth. In, 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 Colossians, 2, in Colossians chapter 2, it tells you the same thing. In Colossians to, it says that you have been made perfect. You have been made with, with you have no, you, you are lacking nothing. Colossians 2.10, you are lacking, you don't lack anything. In the work of God, Colossians 2.10, you are not lacking anything. You're not lacking. Positional. You are a saint because you are in Christ. You are a saint because you are in Christ. Positionally, you are in Christ Jesus. That's why we are all saints. We have no reason to boast of what God did for us. No reason to boast. Rather, we should appreciate all that he has done for us. We should appreciate. How do we appreciate the work of God? God has already made us saints. That's why everybody is called a saint. By the way, when Paul called the Corinthian saint, there was an incense, incense man there, incensious man. You know about the incensious man in Corinthians, don't you? The man that took the, the father's wife in the church. He, he was there when he wrote that. He was still there. He didn't say, you are all saints apart from that man. No, he said, all of you are saints in Christ Jesus. Set apart by God by the virtue of your faith alone in Christ alone. And then, when you become a believer, when you become a saint in Christ and you are set apart, God wants you to live a holy life. That, that takes us to the second sainthood, experiential holiness or experiential sainthood. God wants us to live a holy life. In 1 Peter 1, verse 14 and 15 and 16, says, He who calls you is holy. Be holy as well. It doesn't mean a saint, go ahead and live anyhow you want. No, that's not what it means. Remember, you want to run and become a winner. You want to be a winner in the Christian life. How do you become a winner? By following the process God has given us. Experiential. Experiential means your conduct. Your daily living. But that experiential 
is empowered by the Holy Spirit. You cannot live the Christian life by your own power. By saying, you know what? No, I'm going to, this today, today is what? Sunday. I'm going to, I have, let me put a list of what I will do. Number one, I will not tell a lie. Of course, you already lied. By, not, by saying you not tell a lie, you already lied. You better confess it. Number two, I, I will, when somebody, I will not be angry today. Number three, you listed it, you are a human. And maybe you are driving, you are somebody cussing in front of you. You say, oh, I said to myself, I will not be angry today. Then he, he does it again. He says, mm, I'm not going to say a word. He comes he come so close, you, you lose it. Hey, you, Bucky. I'm not going to say what you say. But you say something that is bad. You're angry now. Why? You just lost it. You're human. Living the life of Christian is not by rigidity, by say, biting your teeth and say, I'm going to be so holy today. No. It is the work of the Holy Spirit who enables you, who fills you. It says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it produces the fruit inside of you. Galatians 5.22. For the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. You cannot love your enemy unless the Holy Spirit produces that love in you. You cannot have peace unless the Holy Spirit produces the peace in you. Because it's his fruit. That's why we are all experiencing what God has given us to run this race and run it successfully. Unfortunately, many churches don't understand what I'm teaching you. Many pastors don't even have time to dig into the word of God and uncover the truth that is already there. I'm not bringing a new thing here. I am uncovering what, I'm, just, I'm showing you passages. That's why the church is so weak. Experiential sanctification or experiential holiness 1 Peter 1, 14 and 15, Romans 12, verse 1. We are called to live a holy life. Then this brings us to the last one, ultimate sainthood. Ultimate sainthood. Ultimate sainthood. Or ultimate holiness. What's that? It means God removes you from this life and brings you home. People who are already in heaven are called saints already because what you are here is what you will be in heaven. We've been studying Revelation. The martyrs, the saints who, worship, who will be worshiping God. It can happen by death or by rapture. If Jesus comes today, right now, we are all be renewed. Our body will be removed from us. This decayed body will be removed. And we will be corrupt into heaven with a new body, glorious body, in the presence of God. Saints for all eternity. Glorious. So again, sainthood is something that happens now. It's not when you die. If you are a believer, you are already a saint. You are already holy. First Peter 2 calls you a holy people, a holy nation. You are already holy. You're not waiting until you die. No. Wherever Paul wrote them, he didn't write to those who died. He wrote to those who are still living. To those of you in Rome, set apart, holy, saints. The same thing he wrote. Everywhere you find the word, Paul called them saints. They were still living. Not after death. That's why the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth sets you free. Quickly, this end up with these four points of truths and principles. Four points of truths and principles. One, Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. He is the Holy One of God. The Holy One of God. Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. John 6, verse 69. Two, God makes us holy by entering us into Christ. God makes us holy by entering us into Christ. 
this is you. By God putting you in Christ, he has made you holy. First Corinthians 12 verse 13. First Corinthians 1 verse 30. Second Corinthians 5 verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. He's a new creature. All things have passed away. He can, he can never be associated with Adam again forever. He's been passed away. That's why Romans 8 1 says, There is no other condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation has been removed. You can never be condemned again for internal damnation. Two, three, the indwelling Holy One of God, the indwelling Holy One of God in us also makes the indwelling Holy One of God in a believer also makes the believer a saint or holy. Jesus, let me show you again. The, God, the way God does things is just amazing. This is you. This is you. You. Very bad. I am bad. I am bad. You know it. We all know it. This is you. Now, Jesus, the Holy One of God, the Holy One, comes and indwells you. Do you know that Jesus is indwelling you now? So the Holy One, the Holy One of God is inside of you, thereby making you holy. Colossians 1.27, Jesus in you, the hope of glory. That's amazing. So it's a double, double share. You are in Christ. Christ is in you. And don't, don't even think too much. How can I be inside a person? And the person is also inside of me. Don't think too much. You get a headache. It is the work of God. It's a mystery. Four, finally, therefore, positional holiness or sainthood is the work of God from start to finish. Remember that. Positional holiness or sainthood is the work of God from start to finish. God starts it, God will end it. What God begins, he ends. Paul said in, 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 in uh, Paul said to the Philippians 1, I am convinced, I am persuaded that whatever, who, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to end. So who are you to tell God? God, you started with this believer, you're not going to carry it through. Oh, because this believer failed, therefore God, is, your work is failed. Don't tell that to God. What he starts, he will finish. That is his character. You may arrive in heaven with nothing, but you arrived. You see, God's, God's, God's objective is to bring you to heaven. When you believe in Christ, his objective is to bring you to heaven. Whether you will arrive with goodies, packages, blessings, or you will arrive empty-handed, but you will arrive. In heaven, there's going to be a distinction. There will be believers like Paul and other people who glorify God. They will be decorated. They will be blessed. They will be awarded so many crowns. And then there will be others in heaven wandering with nothing for all eternity. How do you want to arrive in heaven? You will arrive. How do you want to arrive? Empty-handed? Cleaning somebody's house forever. You want to be a maid, housemaid, for all eternity? You know, in other words, being a housemaid here on earth is not enough for you? You want to experience that forever? Let's go. You will arrive empty-handed. Paul said it in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 11 through 15. He said that everybody will be here, but the difference will be reward. If, you, if all you accumulated is wasted, Paul said that it will be burnt with no reward. In verse 15, he says, but if, if, the, if what you accumulated in life with your spiritual life sustains fire, silver, gold, and precious stones, Paul says you will receive reward. How do you want to arrive? 
Let's close with this passage. Let's read them together. Let's, let's, let's read it together. Uh, Colossians, uh, Jude. I hope you still have light there. Jude 1, verse 24. Do we still have uh, my people, they are gone? <laughs> Jude 1, verse 24. Let's read it together. Jude 1, 24. Jude is your last chapter. Okay, now they're back. Let's read it together. As you read, what my, my conclusion here is that it is God who does all the work. It is God who puts you in Christ. It is him who will do the presentation. It is him who will keep you from stumbling until the end, not you. You can't hold yourself. I pity people who say, I want to be rapturable. How? Tell me how. How can you be rapturable? People, there are people who say, I'm holding my salvation. How are you holding it? Do you see it? Is, it, is that an egg? This is who does it. And let's read it together. Now, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy. 25. Verse 24 and 25. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory majesty, dominion, authority before time and now and forever. Let us say amen. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, we bring our closing to anyone who is here without Christ, without hope, without internal life. Jesus had you personally on his mind when he was hanging on the cross. It is so clear. Salvation is by faith alone, in Christ alone. Why faith alone and Christ alone? Because the payment has already been made on the cross. He took our penalty and paid it dearly where he screamed all day on the cross of Calvary. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was forsaken because he was paying, our, paying for our sins. When he made every payment, he said it is finished. Take the last time. It stands finished with a result that continues forever. So when he said finished, the door of salvation was thrown wide open. Anyone can walk through that door. It is not by your works, rather by faith alone. As the Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation has no connotation to your work, good or bad. It's simply believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and you are placed in the body of Christ. You become a saint instantly and that will never be taken away from you for it is a gift. For the gift of God, Romans eleven twenty nine, 29, is irrevocable. The gift of God can never be revoked. That is his character. Right now, where you are, you can tell God that you are putting your faith in Christ and eternal life will be yours for all eternity. I call upon my brother David to close us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving for our service today, Father, for the opportunity that you give us to gather together and hear your word, Father, to be taught your word. And the word we heard today, Father, so exciting. And as always, Father, not because of who and what we are, but because of who and what you are. Father, we can take comfort in knowing that our road to canonization, to sainthood, is not determined five years after our death, Father, by individuals examining our life, what we did or did not do, but for the work on the cross that was done by our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our belief in him as our Savior. And that is your plan, Father. 
And we know very sure, Father, that we are to be with him as it was his desire for that belief. Once again, not for what we do, not for any works. We know we're imperfect, Father. We know we sin. We know, Father, that upon belief, as Reverend Moses taught us today and in the past, we are new creatures in Christ, Father. We can take comfort in knowing that we will have eternal life with him. But when we also heed, Father, that we not show up empty-handed, that part of the equation. And Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that you give us each and every week to continue to learn and to grow in the knowledge of your word. And Father, if it is your will, we, we pray that we will again have the opportunity next week to gather and to do so. We ask these things by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ.